In this video, I wanna show you how you can use cross-site scripting to exfiltrate or really steal sensitive data from a victim user in the context of a pen test or red team or a CTF scenario. Now, I first stumbled across this specific attack path on one of the recent try hacking machines called Why Hack Me. Would really encourage you to check it out and just note this will be a spoiler alert because this is the way you get initial access to the Why Hack Me machine. Now, cross-site scripting is something you may have heard about and often we don't understand the impact of cross-site scripting because the way you can prove cross-site scripting is with a simple JavaScript pop-up that when it executes, it pops up like a one. We don't realize the true power of executing JavaScript in the context of another user session, especially an administrative user. So I want to walk you through this attack path, and then I want to share with you a Python script that I created because when I did this in the room, it took me way too long. So once I figured it out, I scripted it out. I made a Python script that once you do the Python script, it will generate the malicious JavaScript script and you'll be well on your way to executing this attack. Let me show you my very beautiful diagram I made. Now, to be very clear, I don't normally make diagrams. Matter of fact, I've never made a diagram, I don't think, up until this point. So I put this diagram together and I want to walk you through this because I know it can be a little bit confusing. So here we are. This is us, right? Black hoodie, I don't have a mask on, but black hoodie, I have my black hoodie on. We are the hacker, we are the attacker. And what we are doing in the context of this is we are setting our username to a JavaScript payload because the web app we're gonna look at does not correctly encode the JavaScript so we're able to execute JavaScript via our username. And that's gonna be our JavaScript payload. And I'll show that to you once we actually get there, but we're gonna do our JavaScript payload as our username, and it's gonna be stored right here on the web server. And that's what makes it really severe because it's stored cross-site scripting as opposed to reflected cross-site scripting. When it's reflected, often you need to get a user to go to a specific URL. When they go to the URL, the JavaScript is executed. With stored cross-site scripting, the payload itself is actually stored, hence the name, on the web server, and any user who visits that page, the JavaScript will be executed in the context of their session, and you can attack any user who visits that page. So we are going to send our JavaScript payload so it's stored on the web server. And then we have our sweet admin user over here. And when our admin user goes to the web server to look at the comments, our JavaScript is going to execute. So that payload is going to be sent over to our admin user. Now, JavaScript is powerful because with JavaScript, you can basically do anything the victim user can do with JavaScript on the client side. So if it's a web application, whether it's changing passwords, updating emails, if you can get the right payload, then when that user goes to it, that is going to execute. So in this example, our admin user is going to go to the web server and the JavaScript payload is going to hit him. It's going to execute. And when it executes, it's going to cause our admin user, without them even knowing it, and I'll show this to you, without them even knowing it, they won't see anything, but without them knowing it, it's going to do a get request to a secret file. Now this could be anything, anything that only the admin has access to that our attacker does not have access to. Now in the context of this scenario, our secret file is a file only accessible from the local host, which means us as the attacker, we cannot hit this file. It is only accessible to the admin user. So we can't just do a get request for this, it will fail, it'll be forbidden, so we can't do it but our admin user has access to this file. This could be credentials, it could be sensitive information, whatever it is. In this scenario, it is credentials for SSH access that we don't have access to. But if we create the right payload, our admin user, when he visits the website, when he sees the comments, will execute the JavaScript, they will do a get request to get the file content, and then they will send the file to us all without them knowing it, and then we have just exfiltrated sensitive data from our victim user. Let me show you how this works in practice. So I created a script right here, cross-site scripting extract.py. And I do wanna walk you through a little bit about what's going on here. Here is our JavaScript template. And this is what I initially created before I turn it into a Python script. But you can see what we're doing right here is we're setting a variable, a constant variable called path. This is our target path. So it, this could be, in this example, it's slash dir slash pass.txt, but this could be slash users slash passwords.txt. Just any file the admin has access to, but we as the attacker do not have access to. So we're setting that path. Then we're doing an HTTP request. We're getting all of this set up with JavaScript. This is how you interact with HTTP. And here is where some of the magic is happening. So through this script right here, we are getting our user to go into our path to get the file for us. And then we want the user 
the admin in this example to send us the content of the file right here. So we're storing the content variable up here. Here's going to be our attacker IP. And we're saying, hey, we want you to append the content onto our attacker IP. So when we host something like a simple Python web server, we will get the content of that secret file. And then we're going to go ahead and send the request out. Now, all my all my Python script is doing is taking this kind of like a boiler template and then allowing you to specify the target directory and your attacker IP, and it will generate the malicious JavaScript that you need. So let me show it to you in action. And if you want this script, look in the description of this video and you can find it in my GitHub. If we do Python slash H for help, we have some examples of how to use this. So we have to do dash D specify our target directory and dash E I to give our attacker IP. And here it is. A script will generate a malicious JavaScript file. When this is used in a cross site scripting attack, it will cause the victim to navigate to the target directory and send the content to the attacker. That is us. This is useful. If the victim is an admin or privileged user with access to sensitive information, only use with permission. That is key. Don't use this for real malicious purposes. Only for pen tests, red teaming, CTF, things like that. And then I even give you what the cross site payload will look like. Now, often you have to bypass some restrictions. So this is going to look a little bit different if there's things in place to stop you, but this is going to be a general template of how you can execute this. When the attacker goes to this, they'll visit your IP and they will download the script.js, which is going to be the malicious script. Now in this example, my IP is right here, 10.13.4.234. And I know that our path is slash slash dir slash pass dot text because based on the CTF, that is where some credentials are being stored, but only accessible to the local host. So let me actually show you what happens if I try to access it myself. Here is our blog. And the first hint that we should see, it might be vulnerable to cross site scripting is this comment. Hey people, I'll be monitoring your comments. So please be safe in email. So we know our admin is regularly looking at the comments. So if we can somehow get cross site scripting to execute in the comments, we are able to attack the admin. Now, if we go here, copy this, go here and we'll do dir pass.txt because these are where the credentials are at. You will see it will not succeed. Forbidden, we cannot access this resource. We are not accessing it from local host. We do not have admin permissions, but we want to get the admin to visit that. So let's go back to our terminal and let's go ahead and give our script a shot. So we'll do this right here and we want to specify our directory. So dir pass.txt and then RIP 10.13.4.234. There we go. JavaScript code has been written to script.js. So if we ls, we can cat script.js. And there is our payload with everything needed for it to work. Now, the thing that we need to do is set up a simple Python web server. But first, let's just remember what is the context of our payload. So here is our payload. So let's go ahead and just copy this. And we can open up our notes. And we'll just drop this in here. And we'll fill out this information so we have our payload ready. There we go. Now back over to here, we have our script.js. So right now we can do a sudo Python three and host a simple web server so that we are serving out our script.js and we can receive Git requests. Now, if we go back over to this, what's vulnerable is gonna be the username here. Now, if you wanna see how I discovered all of this, you can watch my full walkthrough of this room, but I'm gonna keep it nice and simple and I'll just tell you the username is what's vulnerable to cross-site scripting. If I could type, that would be a good starting point. I actually think it might be register.php. Do, do, do. Oh my goodness, I cannot type. Register.php. There we go. Only took me like five attempts, but that's okay. John Hammond sometimes messes up too. So I'm in a... <laughs> I'm in good company. So our username is what's vulnerable at the cross site scripting. So if we pull up our payload right here, let's copy that and let's set our username to that payload. And we'll do hack smarter one, two, three, same password as my bank account, of course. And we'll hit submit query to create our account. All right, now we can go ahead and log in and then we should be able to leave a comment. So this is our username and then hack smarter one, two, three. There we go. And we go over to the blog and now we can leave a comment and we know the admin is monitoring the comment. So we can just say, hello, admin. We don't have to do the cross site scripting in the comment section because of course the JavaScript payload is in our username itself. So it's going to be stored on the server. Just like I showed you in the diagram, admin user is going to visit it. JavaScript is going to execute and it's going to send us the file. So we'll go ahead and click submit. 
And you can see, we don't see anything execute, but we can see we executed on ourselves right here. That's RIP. And you can see the admin user already visited it. He got our script.js and it executed correctly. And the file that we were not able to get to ourselves, we have received. So we can see we have a username of Jack and a password is why is my password so strong? IDK. So if we pull up our diagram, that's exactly what we did. We sent our JavaScript payload after I figured out how to register an account. It's stored on the server. Our admin user went to the server. The JavaScript payload was sent to them. It caused them to do a get request on our secret file and it sent the file over to us as the attacker. And we just successfully used cross-site scripting to exfiltrate sensitive data. Hope you found this information helpful. If you haven't done the why hack me room on track, hack me, check it out. This is just one part of the room. The rest of it is a lot of fun as well. Thank you for watching. I will see y'all in the next one.